Hello everyone and welcome to another Flowcode version 9 tutorial video. Today I'm going to be looking at using Modbus on an ESP32 device and using Flowcode App Developer to talk to that device. So to begin with I'll create the ESP32 firmware. So I'm going to choose create a new project for an ESP. Under miscellaneous um, I'm going to use the low lane 32 light new project. I'm going to save this. I'm going to overwrite a file on my desktop um, just because I've already compiled to this file and it should speed up the compilation later on. So I'm just going to call it ESP32 Modbus. Yes, I want to replace it. To begin with, on my component panel uh, there's a few components I need to add. So, component libraries, comms. I'm going to start with the uh, Modbus TCP master. Uh, sorry, the Modbus TCP slave. We want to create a slave device on the ESP hardware. You see, it has a, a, a red circle with some uh, network nodes. That's the icon that it, uh, it requires a, a network comms component. The network comms um, gives us um, uh, sort of a universal network interface. So various hardware have have different APIs, and what this does is that abstracts the API so that we can have library components talk to a generic interface and then abstract it to the uh, interface that the hardware requires. So Modbus TCP slave, and we're just going to connect that to our network comms. So that's now connected with an arrow. Uh, in the properties, uh, there's open and close socket. Uh, I'm going to set that to yes. Uh, I found that um, that must be set to yes to allow uh, the the comms to, to work uh, reliably on the ESP32 hardware. Uh, there's a few other properties here. Uh, we'll look at those in a minute, and they're sort of more Modbus specific. So we've got our Modbus slave connected through network comms. Now we need the actual ESP32 Wi-Fi itself. So again, under comms, we have um, WLAN ESP32. You can see that that again has the matching icon there. So under network comms, I'm just going to connect that to my WLAN ESP32. And again, we get a little arrow to show that they're connected. So that doesn't really need any setting up with properties, neither does this. And the only thing we need to look at is the Modbus TCP slave. Uh, today I'm only going to have one coil, um, but I'm just going to leave these settings as default. Coils are like digital states, so on or off. Digital inputs, uh, I believe, are 16 bit values. Um, Analog inputs 16 bit values and Modbus registers are 16 bit values. These are pretty general purpose, really. Um, you can use them for anything you want. Um, the Modbus standard describes these as digital inputs, but really it's, it's just a 16 bit number. Um, at the moment, we've got eight, eight digital inputs, uh, one analog input, and one register. But you, you can have as many or as few of these as you want. In fact, we're not going to use these, so let's set these all to zero. Just free up a bit of uh, RAM on the device. Now, you can see on the panel there's arrows to show the, the flow of control. So we're going to call the Modbus TCP slave component and that's going to control network comms which controls the ESP32. Now the way that you want to call the icons for this is you basically want to initialize these in order and you want to initialize them starting with the very end of the chain so the WLAN ESP32. So I'm just going to initialize the WLAN ESP32 and I'm also going to connect it to my local network. So my SSID, that's the name of my um, network here. Then the password and the 
um, amount of seconds that I want to wait for it to connect successfully. So I'm setting that to a time of 20 seconds. That should be uh, more than enough to allow it to join the network. The next thing uh, is the network comms, so I'm going to initialize that. And then the last one is the Modbus TCP slave, which I'll also initialize. I'm then going to create an infinite loop in which I'm going to check for incoming. I'm going to create a variable to store um, that incoming in, which is of type byte. And then I'm going to say if uh, in equals one, so if if any incoming data has been received, then I want to read uh, the states of the coils. So start address is coil zero. I want I'm just interested in one coil, and again I'll store that in variable in. And then what I want to do is I want to output that coil state to a pin on the uh, microcontroller. I'm using pin 26 and I'm just going to output the value of in. If I bring up my hardware we go. here I have uh, my ESP32 board and you can see I've just just got a very simple uh, LED connected between pin 26 and ground. So it's very, very simple. Okay, and that's our embedded program done. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to click on Build, Project Options. I'm going to just double check that the COM port is correct for my hardware. Click Modify. And then I'm going to compile to the target. on the compilation window. As you can see I've already compiled um, to this device um, so I've already compiled this project before so it's 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 compiling very quickly. If you were compiling a new project then it would it would take a few minutes to uh, complete just to compile in all the ESP32 libraries. So it's currently it's compiled and it's now programming the board. 61% so nearly complete so not a lot to see there at the moment we'll just wait for this to finish and then we'll carry on with the app developer project ok 100% uh, done so right that's that's that one out the way so the next step is to create the master to allow us to control this so we're going to create a new project I'm going to create an app developer project. This this doesn't have to be an app developer project. You could you could create an, um, a Modbus master from um, another second ESP32 device, or or from your phone, or from an, an, a number of uh, different um, programs that you can download and install onto your computer. So we'll start again with um, the comms components. This time we want the Modbus TCP master. See again it has the network comms connection. So we're going to provide network comms. Now as we're not going to um, be downloading this to hardware, we don't need the additional step. Uh, we just need to connect this one to the network comms. So that's connected. And then this provides um, all the communications from the PC. We don't need to connect it to anything else, um, just just for the PC to to work. So, what do we need to do now? Um, we need to again call these in order. So we start with the network comms. So we would initialize the network comms. There is no initialize for the Modbus TCP master uh, in the um, app developer mode. 
I think if you're an, in an embedded device there would be an initialize function you could call here. So we can go straight into a loop. Uh, what we probably want is a switch. So under controls I'm going to add a switch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the state of the switch. So get state. I'm going to create two variables here. So one would be um, switch. And I'm going to create an old switch. Now I'm going to use the old switch to determine when the value of switch changes. So switch is switch one get state. I would have a decision which is if switch is not equal to old switch then calculation old switch equals switch to update the old old uh, variable setting and then for single coil our slave ID is zero coil address is zero coil state is switch and I think that that's our program done ah no sorry one, one other thing we need to set the TCP address so we need to set the address uh, of our slave device now the way I'm doing this is I have uh, let's bring up I have my local uh, network Wi-Fi router which I can log into and this should give me the IP address of the device now another way to do it would be on the ESP to print the address to like a, a, a display or something but I'm just gonna cheat and get it this way so I know under wireless view all devices that are connected and here we can see the expressive device is 192.168.1.127 so I'm going to set TCP address in the string 192.168.1.127 now let's just bring that down a bit so we can see my camera And with any luck, if I run this, run the project, just close some of these windows, I can make the light come on and off by clicking the switch. Another nice thing is if I click view and consoles and then look at the Modbus data, I can see all the Modbus messages as they're happening with um, timestamps we can see if we're getting a reply or not now what we might want to do let's just turn it off again let's stop this from running what we might want to do is we might want to export this as an app developer project so so we can give it out to um, customers so the one thing that they would need that the customer would need, need to be able to change is this address of the uh, ESP board on their network. So what we might do is um, add a new property and call this um, I don't know IP address. We'll give it a variable of say IP. It's a line of text. And in there we would give it the default 192.168.1.127 and in here we would change this to the name of our property which is IP let's just double check that that still works yes that's still working fine now what we can do is go to file export deploy as a flockered app yes Ask us what um, if we want to save the project, so I'll just call that Flockered One. 
Um, various settings, so we want the main view to be the 2D dashboard, that's where our switch is. Um, we, don't want the, we don't want the 3D system. Uh, we want the properties panel to always be shown. We want the console panel um, as optional, we don't want the data recorder. Uh, program title, so this is mod bus tcp master. We want to bundle the runtime, just click deploy. I'm just going to put it on the desktop. Success. So let's close these projects. And inside the Modbus TCP master folder that's been created, we've got a batch file that will run the uh, SCADA project, the app developer project. shrink that down a bit. So you can see here we've got our property for the IP address. Let's just make sure that I'm not cheating. Change that slightly to 1.126. We run that and we look at the console. You can see that now we're getting no replies. So if I just stop that and change it back to 127 you can see now it's working again. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Ben Rowland. This has been Flock Version 9.